Got ideas for how transit in Maryland could be faster over the next 25 years? More reliable? Go more places? Have better connections? You're going to want to know what's in the Central Maryland Regional Transit Plan. The plan focuses on short-term infrastructure improvements, like dedicated bus lanes and better transit stops and stations, as well as new transit service. The Regional Transit Plan matters because our region is growing, and many jobs in the future will not be reachable by existing transit. One element of the plan is identifying 30 new transit corridors that together would create a strong transit network in Central Maryland. These corridors can make it easier to travel without a car by developing new service, schedules, routes, and infrastructure. Here you can see the corridors we're looking at now. One goes east to west and one goes north to south. To get these corridors built, we've got some work to do first. To begin, we conduct a corridor study to identify the range of options that best serve existing and future transit demand for a specific area. Following a corridor study, a smaller number of options will receive additional environmental and engineering review. These studies and analysis can then be used to apply for funding to design and construct better transit. Right now, we're in the middle of the first step, the corridor study process. In this presentation, we'll share what we've been working on. In spring and summer 2021, we asked riders, residents, and employers about what matters to them through small group roundtable discussions, in-person surveys, randomly selected household surveys, and an online public survey. We then dug into the data to analyze who uses transit now and who might in the future, mapped where people want to go today as well as tomorrow, and collected ideas for how these projects can best fit with other local efforts. We learned that in the North-South Corridor, respondents wanted more direct service with faster end-to-end -end travel times. Whereas in the East-West Corridor, respondents were interested in having more connections along the way. We also confirmed the places people want to go using transit. We then converted all the information we gathered into project goals for each corridor study. Here are some examples. Prioritize the needs of existing transit riders in transit critical populations. Increase mobility and access to jobs, services, and opportunities in the region, and create strategic connections to many transit options locally and regionally. Next, we set up a range of questions to test to make sure we're achieving the goals, like how many people would use the service? How many households with no car have access? What are the estimated construction and operating costs? What are the potential travel time savings compared to the existing transit service? With answers to these questions, we can see how different options compare in terms of achieving the project goals. These options, or as we call them, alternatives, contain different combinations of the following. Modes are the kinds of transit service that would be used, whether that's light rail transit, bus rapid transit, subway, or something totally new. Alignments are the routes that transit would follow, including where it starts and ends, and where stops would be. In 2022, we'll return to the public with interactive presentations displaying how alternatives compare to each other. You'll be able to see detailed information to help identify which alternatives may be good options for providing new transit services within these corridors. Thank you for taking the time to hear about the Regional Transit Plan, and we look forward to getting your feedback in the spring. You can find additional information at rtpcorridors.com.